Church, the home church of Rosa Parks. And for those who are worshiping us virtually, we are so happy that you have chosen to be with us today. And we pray that God will bless you mightily. The men of the church, our sons of Allen, will be leading us in our worship experience. Our call to worship is Brother James Jackson, our invocation, Brother Johnny Johnson, and our scriptural lesson is Brother Lincoln Myers. Amen. Call to worship, praise to praise be to God who has called us together. We come here seeking healing and hope. Open your hearts to God's redeeming love. Help, Help us to hear your words, word, O Lord, and follow your ways. In the midst of struggle and strife, God is with us. Praise, praise be to God for God's steadfast presence. Even though many things in life hurt and disappoint us, God is with us. We seek God's mercy and grace to heal our wounded soul. All together, come, bring your needs and wants to God, for God will hear your cries and restore your soul. Praise be to God for faith, mercy, peace, and hope. Amen. Thank you. 
Jesus. It's the best thing any of us could do. It's the best thing any of us could have ever done. I come to you this morning, oh Heavenly Father, asking for your grace and mercy. Your grace and mercy for all of us assembled here today and all of the people who are on the airways. We want you to please to bless the sick, the people who may have a mental sickness, people who have problems that they don't articulate to anybody, but they need to talk to you about it, oh Heavenly Father, because we know that you are the doctor. We know that you are the psychiatrist for all the mental problems, and you are the doctor for all the physical illness that we may have. So please, Heavenly Father, think about all our young people. Please let your grace and your mercy shine upon them because you say your grace and mercy is sufficient for all our problems. We know that we have problems going on in our, with our young people that probably only you can, can, can deal with us, Heavenly Father, because we don't seem to have the answers um, ourselves. We need, to, need for you to help us to get those people back into your house your church, because I feel that's where all the answers lie for some of their problems. And obviously they're a problem because they're doing atrocious things to each other every day, Heavenly Father. We need you to intervene. We need you to intervene with our leaders, our local, our national leaders, and our world leaders, because the problem that's that are going on in this country and in this world, they're nothing new. Isaiah talked about it years ago. They, they was going on then, but you took care of your people. You took care of the Christian. You took care of the people who followed you. And we're asking you to do that again for us, O Heavenly Father, both locally and nationally. And we're asking you to let your blessings shine upon all the members of St. Paul and all the people on the airways. We want you to bless the, the, the ministry of this great church all the people who are assembled. We ask for these blessings, O oh Heavenly Father, in your name, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Falling, falling in love with Jesus. With Jesus. Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. You don't need further instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And so, God willing, we'll move forward to further understanding 
understanding. For it is impossible to bring back to repentance those who were once enlightened, those who have experienced the good things of heaven and shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come, and who then turn away from God. It is impossible to bring such people back to repentance by rejecting the Son of God. They themselves are nailing him to the cross once again and holding him up to public shame. When the ground soaks up the falling rain and bears a good crop for the farmer, it has God's blessing. But if a field bears thorns and thistles, it is useless. The farmer will soon condemn that field and burn it. Dear friends, even though we are talking this way, we really don't believe it applies to you. We are confident that you are meant for better things, things that come with salvation. For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. Amen. And the people of God said, amen. amen. At this time, we invite our young people, if they would proceed, amen, to our youth and teen church. To God be the glory, amen, for all the things that he continues to do. We realize that it is spring break, amen, that has started this week. So for all of our young people and their parents and guardians who are on the road, amen, we pray God's traveling mercies upon them and they will have a good time, amen, and we look forward to seeing them when they return, amen.
Look, here you come, dear Lord, for we are so unworthy to even call up on your name. So please, 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 little Lord, hear our cry. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh in this place. I need the spirit of the living God 
to fall fresh in my dilemma right now. I need the spirit of the living God to fall upon my woes and my enemies and my frenemies and my health and my finances because I can't do it on my own. I need the spirit of the living God to fall fresh. Come on, one more time. Just tell them to fall down. Oh, Spirit of the living God. God said amen. Yes. Beloved, this third Sunday in March has been set aside for a connectional purple Sunday in the AME church, bringing attention and raising awareness to Alzheimer's and other dementias. Reverend L Brother Lincoln, I've already ordained you. Brother Lincoln Myers, because I caught myself. I sure said Reverend, amen. Brother Lincoln Myers have read our text in its entirety in your hearing. But in your hearing, I'm just going to lift up verse 10 of Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. And it simply says, for God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. And for a little while, I want us to reflect on this thought that God will never forget. <laughs> that God will never forget. Shall we bow? Shall we pray? Once again, God, I step behind this sacred desk realizing my inadequacy, but realizing also, God, that I'm totally dependent upon you in this preaching moment, that people have pressed their way into the sanctuary and even the sanctuary of their hearts for those who are worshiping virtually, for they desire to hear a word from you. So God, come on and have your way. Come Holy Ghost with your quickening power. Because it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. And the people of God in agreement said amen. amen. Beloved, God will never forget. Linda Lawrence. Linda Lawrence in her article in Christian Life Resource. She wrote, and I quote, that mom is poor in spirit, thinking Alzheimer's has robbed her of any ability to bless. She is 
dependent on Medicaid for financing her care needs. She is dependent on caregivers for her most personal needs. Her body is shriveling, as is her brain, but her contented spirit expands and she blesses others as she hums and sings that God is so good. God is so good to me. She is blessed with breathing the air of the kingdom of heaven while here on earth. End of quote. She hums and she sings that God is so good to me. Alzheimer's, memory loss that disrupts daily life, challenges in planning for solving problems, difficulty completing familiar tasks, confusion with time or place, trouble understanding visual images and spatial relationships. New problems with words in speaking or writing. Misplaced things and losing the ability to retrace steps. Decreased or poor judgment. Withdrawal from work or social activities and changes in mood and personality. All of these are early signs and symptoms according to the Alzheimer's Association. Today is the third annual Connectional AME Purple Sunday. And among black Americans aged 70 and older, 21.3% are living with Alzheimer's. In fact, African Americans are twice as likely as non-Hispanic white Americans to have Alzheimer's disease or a related dementia. So despite being at increased risk, African Americans typically do not seek medical attention when the symptoms first appear. Regardless, Regardless of how this disease attempts to debilitate and rob the simple joys of life, the good news, beloved, is that our faith remains and God will what? Never forget. And beloved, this brings me to our sermonic text. You see, in our sermonic text, the scholars, they debate over whether the author is Paul, Apollos, or Barnabas. But the intent of the letter is to encourage a group of Hebrews. I'm talking about some Jewish Christians, believers of the way, because they were living in some perilous times. They were under intense persecution, even facing imprisonment because of their confession of faith in Jesus the Christ. And because of the persecution, some of them were losing their faith. Some of them were even contemplating returning back to their Jewish beliefs. In other words, if we can't beat them, then we might as well what? Join them. Well, beloved, there are trials and there are tribulations and there are trouble on every doorstep, whether you talk about them or not. And whether we admit it or not, dealing with the demands of life uh, while you're trying to deal with your own stuff, and while you're trying to care for loved ones with chronic illness, uh, it's overwhelming, beloved, on most days. But no matter, no matter what you are going through right now, the good news is that God will never abandon his people. Uh, don't you know that God's divine presence uh, is always available uh, and always acceptable to us? Amen. So even when caring for loved one, 
minds who's thinking and their feelings and their abilities are distorted. In other words, this is day in and day out, but you still provide selfless care. And I know it challenges our faith, even the best of us, amen. So in these times, Beloved, that's when we need to remain faithful to Jesus because Jesus is our only hope of salvation. Can I tell you that in times like these, we are still called to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not what? In vain in the Lord. So, beloved, without question, uh, the work is difficult. And I know trying to remain faithful is challenging. But the author of our Semitic text, he offers the following advice when we are going through. Beloved, are you ready? Number one, he says it's time to move forward. Oh, I'm in the text, amen, verses 1 and 2. He's telling us that we're time to move forward. It says, so let us stop going over the basic teaching about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become what? Mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of, of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. You don't need further instructions about baptism, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Oh, beloved, the text, the text is suggesting that, listen, uh, we've been up under biblical teaching long enough. So at this time, we should be understanding the fundamentals of our faith. We should know about the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. We shouldn't have to keep teaching about repentance from sins, from sinful acts that lead to death and destruction. For if you are truly sorry, then true repentance is a change of mind. And if you have a change of mind, then guess what? It should result in a change of action. And if we are repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God, then we should be able to recognize the bait that is on the trap that Satan has already planned for you. What am I trying to say? Satan knows the bait uh, that you like on the trap, and by now you should know the bait uh, that you like on the trap so that when you see the bait, uh, you should be able to what? Uh, turn the other way. The scripture says, so let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. What is the author saying? The author is saying by now, you should have mastered those teachings. Because what we are up against right now, we got to elevate our faith. Oh, you still not with me. It's time to move forward. I'm in the text. Look at verse 3. It says, and so God willing, we will move forward to what? Further understanding. You still not with me? New level? New devil. In other words, it's time to move forward to further understanding. Well, you still don't have it. We beloved, with all the calamity, with all of the pestilence, you can say what you want. With all of the bio-warfare COVID-19, with all of the violence in the world today, it's time to move forward to what? Further understanding. With all of the lies and the deception and the carnival mirrors that exist today, it's time to move forward to what? Further understanding. Beloved, we got to elevate our faith it's more than a name it and claim it theology. It's more than a speak it and manifest it theology. It's time to move forward to further understanding. Because the hymn writer said, never said there wouldn't be trials. Never said that I wouldn't fall. Never said that everything would go the way I want it to go. But when my back is against the wall, and I feel that all hope is gone. I just lift my head up to the sky. 
and say, Lord, help me. Help me to be strong because I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I was started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy, but I refuse to believe. God, that you brought me this far to lead me. Beloved, it's time to move forward to further understanding. Then the author of a text, he says in number two, that going back is not an option. Brother Brock, I'm still in the text. Let's look at verses four through six. It says, for it is impossible to bring back to repentance those who were once enlightened, those who have experienced the good things of heaven and shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come, and who then turn away from God. It is impossible to bring such people back to repentance. By rejecting the Son of God, they themselves are nailing him, meaning Christ, to the cross once again and holding him up to public shame. I know y'all saying, Lord, have mercy. Well, come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, See, admittedly, uh, that this is a very controversial pericope, uh, Reverend Owens, uh, and theologians, they still debate uh, it to this day. But can I tell you, uh, in my Holy Ghost interpretation, uh, what the author is saying, what the author is saying, help me, Holy Ghost, uh, that once you are truly, and I said the word truly, uh, that once you are truly saved, uh, then you're always saved. Uh, oh, you still not with me come on in other words going back to your old way of thinking going back to being manipulative running game keeping your hand in the cookie jar going back to your old habits and old ways of living and doing business is not an option why is it not an option because it's just like nailing Jesus to the cross over and over and over again Oh, they're quiet, Holy Ghost. You see, you have tasted the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And the word of God. And you've experienced the Holy Ghost power working in your life. So the question is, uh, why would you want to go back? But can I tell you, it's a little bit deeper than what's on the surface. You see, the author is suggesting that if you go back, then the question is, were you saved in the what? First place. Oh, you're going to get it now. That a true born again believer who made a confession of faith, they cannot what? Lose their salvation. Oh, Brother Gene, I know I'm in Bible country and I need the word of God to back me up. So come on. John chapter 10 verse 27 and 28 it says my sheep uh, hear my voice uh, and I know them and they what follow me I give them eternal life uh, and they will what never perish and no one uh, will snatch them out of my hand Oh, you still not with me? Uh, come on, Judas. Uh, Judas Iscariot. Uh, yes, he was what? One of the 12. Uh, yes, he cast out demons. Uh, yes, he walked with Jesus. Uh, but he found uh, no true, come on, y'all, uh, repentance. Uh, because man looks at the outward appearance. Uh, but God looks at the heart. Uh, God knows when we're faking the what uh, up in here. Mark, I know I need more Bible. Mark 14, verse 21. Woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been better, talking about Judas, for that man if he had not, come on y'all, been born. 
that still ain't good enough for you. Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter what? The kingdom of heaven. But the one who does what? The will of the Father who is in heaven. I know you're saying, Pastor, what's your point with all of that? Well, guess what? When our loved ones, when our loved ones suffer from all time, y'all know they start using some foul language. Uh-huh, yes, they do. They become offensive. They have, what, angry outbursts. They, they show aggression. They become paranoid even delusional uh, it's the disease beloved uh, it's not the person don't you know that dementia can change personalities that dementia can transform wonderful loving uh, godly people uh, into tyrants uh, that dementia uh, can warp uh, a vibrant relationship uh, with God that has been sustained uh, over the years they may have done a complete 180 and appear to be a demon child one of baby kids but what's my point number three that God will what never forget uh huh oh you ain't you don't have it I'm in the word uh, verse 10 if the media team can help me cause they need to see it in what black and white for God is what not Woo! For God is what? He will what? Oh, come on, Holy Ghost. <laughs> he will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. Your folk may be fickle. They may get sick and tired, but we serve a God that he will what? Never. Woo. He will never forget. God is not a what? An unjust God. God will never forget. He'll never forget your works. Never forget your sacrifice, your service, your giving, your loving acts of kindness. God will not forget that you stray true to your ministry and true to your calling. God will never forget that even if we fall short in his glory, that we at least try to live according to his holy word. So God is not an unjust God, and he will always remember. He'll remember the faithfulness that you've shown him. Jesus. Well, beloved, uh, God would never forget that even if we knew use knowledge of the Bible, in other words, if we can't even remember the Bible verse that we once had memorized, that guess what? God would never forget. God would never forget even if we can't what? Memorize new ones. I'm trying to free up some folk. God will what? Never forget. Even if we can't actively participate in devotions, guess what? God will what? Never forget. Even if we can't utter a single prayer, guess what? God will what? Never forget. Because we rest securely under God's promise of what? salvation so God will never forget I know I gotta press my claim because God he has us engraved on the palm of his hand I'm in the word of God God will never forget he will never fail you or he will never forsake you your family may turn their back on you friends may tell you with their mouth they're gonna be there for you and they legs get to walking but God God will never what uh, forsake you or leave you. God will never forget. Uh, he will walk you uh, through every dark valley. Uh, oh, God has numbered uh, every hair uh, on your head. But guess what? God, uh, he will what? Never forget. Uh, because he knows every sparrow that falls to the ground. 
God is aware of every detail of our situation. God will never forget, so I leave you with this. Be not dismayed, whatever betide, because God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you, because God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you because God will never never forget yes hallelujah beloved there may be one who's indeed struggling right now because of all what they are up against we're not trying to trivialize or minimize all of what's happening in your life. It's bad enough that uh, they want to say we're in a post-pandemic, but it's existing still each and every day. It's bad enough that the inflation, amen, is off the chain. It's, it's bad enough, amen, that you're having problems with your relationships and on the job, but you're trying to care for a loved one who have chronic illness. But can I tell you that God will take care of you. Beloved, there's somebody who needs the Lord today. Beloved, there's somebody who needs to be saved. There's somebody that needs to confess the Lord as their personal Savior. There's somebody that needs to acknowledge that Jesus died on an old rugged cross just for you. You need to acknowledge that when the blood came streaming down, it was that same blood that wiped your sins away and gave you a clean slate. But you also need to acknowledge that Jesus got up in three days. And when you accept salvation, God gives you Holy Ghost power. And that's the power that will get you through any situation that you're confronting. Because God will take care of you. Beloved, if you desire to pray the prayer of salvation, we need to hear from you today. Come on, inbox us. Message us. Perhaps there's one under the sound of my voice in this sanctuary. I invite everybody to stand and start praying for somebody that you know that needs the Lord right now. Beloved, perhaps there's one who's looking for a church home. We offer you St. Paul. God is doing an amazing work in the people. And God will do an amazing work in you. The door of the church is open. The invitation to discipleship has been extended. An invitation for salvation. An invitation for church membership. One more time, God will. Yes, Lord. just one more time that God will take care of them. They just need that reminder that God will take care of them.
Oh, yes. Thank you, God. All the way. Oh, yes, he will. He Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep that in your spirit that God will never forget and that God will take care of you. Beloved, what time is it? Giving time. Beloved, what time is it? Giving time. It's giving time. It's time to bless the Lord with them in the ministry of giving. Beloved, let us read our giving verse together. God supplies seed to the planter. He supplies bread for food. God will also supply and increase the amount of your seed. He will increase the results of your good works. You will be made rich in every way. Then you can always give freely. We will take your many gifts to the people who need them, and they will give thanks to God. Beloved, we invite you to prepare your offering at this time. And for those who would like to give online, we support Cash App, GiveLify, PayPal, as well as Zelle. We encourage you to use Zelle, beloved, because there is no fee. If you desire to mail it in our uh, postal address is 706 East Patton Avenue, Montgomery, Alabama, 36111. Or we have a locked mailbox, beloved, amen. And therefore, you can drop it off there. We invite you, amen, to start from the rear at the direction of the ushers. And let's just do it in one section at a time, amen. Let us prepare to give.
Trouble don't last away. That's a blessing. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Trouble don't last away. I'm so glad. Trouble don't last. Trouble don't last away. Things come of the Lord. All things come of the Lord. And of thine own. And of thine own. And we give Amen. Amen. Lord, we just ask you ever so kindly if that you would multiply the seeds that have been sown. Lord, we realize that these are sacrificial seeds that have been given. And Lord, we know that you are in the blessing business. And however you multiply and bless it, God, whatever the harvest is, we're going to glorify and magnify your name. Perhaps some tenfold, some a hundredfold, and some a thousandfold. Lord, some had a desire to give and did not have. But God, your word declared that you'll give seed to the sower. And we trust you to do so. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Beloved, you may be seated. Let us prepare for the announcement. The District Mid-Year Conference will be held March 30th through April 1st at Daniel Payne Plaza. Thanks to all who supported the third quarterly conference, worship workshop, and Reverend McCreary's memorial service. May God bountifully reward your sacrifice. In the early church, baptism of new converts occurred during the Easter season. On the morning of April 8th, as a church family, we will have our baptism service. Details will be announced. Please contact Pastor Lover or the office by March 24th if you are a candidate for baptism or desire your child to be baptized. Team St. Paul, please mark your calendars. There will be a special in-person leadership workshop on Thursday, April the 13th at 6.30 p.m. in the Lamar P. Higgins Fellowship Hall. Refreshments will be served. Official board meeting is Tuesday, March 21st at 6.30 p.m. Zoom information will be sent via email. Holy Week services are as follows. April the 6th, Holy Thursday, Love Feast and the Lord's Supper at 6.30 p.m. April 7th, Good Friday, Seven Last Words at 12 noon. April 8th, Baptism Service at 12.30 a.m. And April 9th, Resurrection Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Due to spring break this week, Bible study and tutoring will be canceled on Wednesday, March 22nd. Holy Week services are as follows. April 6th, Holy Thursday, Love Feast and the Lord's Supper at 6.30 p.m. April 7th, Good Friday, Seven Last Words at 12 noon. April 8th, Baptism Service at 10.30 a.m. And April 9th, Resurrection Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Calling our brothers to join a special 6 a.m. prayer call every Wednesday. A special time set aside for brothers to pray and fast together. Please contact Brother Ronald Smith for more information. Ministry leaders, if you have announcements, please contact Brother Dwight Martin 7 to 10 days prior to the event. Please keep our sick and shut in and our church family in your prayer. And please join our 12 noon prayer call. Have a great day. Have a great week, and please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. I just want to bring um, the following uh, to your attention. Right now, we have six candidates for baptism, and I will be getting in touch with those who 
I have heard from thus far. We'll be having a special uh, training session, amen. Uh, this week, want them to understand the sacrament of baptism and to give them a feel for the service, amen. I do want to say thank you to all of those who came out to the work, uh, worship uh, workshop. It was uh, very meaningful. Even though we expected more, God still moved, God still blessed, and he still revealed. And for that, we are grateful. One of the things that came out of the worship workshop is that at 10.15 a.m., at 10.15 a.m., the altar is going to be open for prayer. One of the things that we miss is altar call. Just trying to be careful because we're still in the pandemic. Amen. But clergy, and I'm also going to ask stewards to make themselves available. And you can just come up to the offer, altar. We can distance. Amen. In that, in that few short uh, period of time. Amen. So we're going to be starting um, altar call prayer. And so one of the things that we talked about, amen, is that there's nothing wrong if we put something in place and if it does not work, that just means that you can divorce that, okay? That's about the best way to say that, amen, that you ain't got to keep doing it if it don't work, amen, that we can legally, amen, separate, amen, but you got to try it. You got to be creative prayerfully, amen, and put things in place. So we're going to try that, amen, as opposed to bringing it within the worship hour. Finally, official board. Official board is going to be on Tuesday. I'm encouraging you to please come via Zoom. Amen. Via Zoom, I will be sending out the information as uh, normal to the entire uh, congregation that whose email address that I have. We're going to be electing delegates to annual conference. We just wrapped up our third quarter. Can you believe that? Amen. We're in the last quarter of this conference year. Amen. These days are just ticking like minutes. Amen. But we are uh, wrapped up our third quarter, and therefore I ask you to be a part of it. I think we got a little time. Amen. So will you please stand and affirm your your faith on what we believe. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all But God will never forget. God will never forget. God will never forget. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord allow his face, his countenance, his favor to shine upon each and every one of you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord give you his peace, his peace that surpasses all understanding. May he guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Today, tomorrow, and forevermore, and the people of God song.
Marvelous, 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 marvelous thing. Y'all know I love to have fun. Please don't forget, we will not have tutoring or Bible study on Wednesday due to spring break. However, beloved, we will have official board meeting on Tuesday via Zoom. We have to elect, amen, our delegates to our annual conference. Please be safe this spring break, amen. Please watch after our young people. God bless you all, amen. Ms. Frizzell. Ms. Frizzell. Marvelous, 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 marvelous things. Praise the Lord.